I am doing an update on Lauren Boebert's tweets. Right? She's brand new congresswoman. Brand new congresswoman out of the 3rd District, Colorado. It's November 22nd. I feel like that's an important date. Sunday, 2020. Miss Poison Pork Slider. Oh, that's Miss Poison Pork Slider. What is this white trash from Florida, this carpet bagging white trash from Florida saying now. Okay, so here's a boberism, right? So giving Andrew Cuomo an Emmy is the equivalent of giving Hannibal Lecter the Nobel Peace Prize. Giving Andrew Cuomo an Emmy is the equivalent of giving Hannibal Lecter the Nobel Peace Prize. So, yeah, my representative is fucking terrible. She is awful. She is the absolute worst. Andrew Cuomo was on TV, and he talked about COVID. He saved thousands, if not millions, of lives providing a counter-narrative to the COVID-19, you know, epidemic, pandemic, then the denier-in-chief, then the denier-in-chief, then Mike Pence get it, and Donald got it. Hannibal Lecter eight people. Okay, Hannibal Lecter, eight people, and Andrew Cuomo saved thousands, if not millions, of lives. Those are, that's not even, hey, Lauren Boebert, that's not even close. That's not even close to being the same thing. Like, Jesus Christ, you project much? So, and, um, Don Jr., hey, Boebert, do you hear? Don Jr. just got the COVID, too. So, while it's pretty fucking disgusting that half the nation is Nazi, the other half is, you know, hippies, and they're fantastic, and socialist anarchist. Well, half the nation is Nazi. That half is also Darwin's selection. They're Darwin's pick. They're Darwin's darlings. So, Lauren Boebert is leading the brigade of Darwin's darlings, and now, every once in a while, Boebert gets something right. She's right about the Electoral College. Here's a tweet Back to Electoral College, there are 17 days until the deadline for states to certify the results, 23 days until the Electoral College meets and votes, Bobert, 46 days until Congress certifies the results, and 60 days until Inauguration Day. President Trump still has time to turn this around and get the real results out. Get the real results. See, now you're assuming there's fucking fraud. Now you're fucking up. But there is a path. The president does have a path. One thing needs to happen to trigger a contingent House election. Nobody gets 270 electoral college votes. So that's all Donna has got to do in order to trigger a House election. The House will vote on the top three candidates of the uh, electoral college election. And all Don has to do to take back the presidency is just two things. One get 37 of Joe Biden's projected Electoral College voters to deflect and to vote for somebody, anybody else. Even better, get them to vote for Don, but um, vote for, you know, not even better for him, right? Win the House contingent election. So, one, deprive Joe 270 Electoral College votes. Two, win the House contingent election. That is decided by the incoming House which means Lauren Boebert would be the one that would be voting on something like this. Scott Tipton, Boebert, they would have voted for Don either way you went. But Jesus Christ, Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert, we stopped asking for permission to go to church in 1776. <laughs> oh, is that, is that what the American Revolution was all about there, Boebert? American Rebel, not democracy elections, the war for independence, it was about to, we just all wanted to go to church, and Great Britain just was stopping us all from going to church, is that what it was all about? I guess it was religious freedom, but ultimately I think the American Revolution was started because uh, George Washington just didn't want to lose his damn slaves, but okay, Lauren Boebert, we stopped asking for permission to go to church in 1776. 1776 is the Declaration of Independence. That's, you know, uh, when we declared our independence from England. Now, if she's talking about the First Amendment, I think that's what she's talking about, right? The American Revolution and all the things that came with it. So, eventually, we'll get the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights, December of 1791. That's 15 years later. So, is that what she's talking about? We stopped asking permission to go to church in 1790, or all, when we declared the independence. 
So, okay. Okay, all right, maybe I'm nitpicking a little bit. Freedom of religion was important, so, you know, kind of, but we also did some other things, too. We also did some other things, too. In uh, 1789, that's when we wrote the Constitution, 13 years after 1776. 1776, 1776 we only declared our independence, that was it. We were, hey, hey, we're independent. And then we fought the war that lasted fucking long, you know, long-ass time, and then eventually got a Constitution, got elections, and got a Bill of Rights. But it, you know, uh, forgot black folks, brown folks, it forgot women, it forgot men that didn't own property, it forgot 90% of the population, so it was kind of, perhaps, maybe even anti-revolutionary in some sense. But you talk about the First Amendment, right? We stopped asking and going for permission, go to fucking church, I don't care, you know, this is Darwin's, you know, Darwin's darlings, go ahead, go to church, go to your old super spreader events. It's all voluntary. I like that it's all voluntary. We haven't done martial law, law yet, right? You'll get fined. Private businesses get to decide. People get to decide. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. What's wrong with... Okay, anyway, so... Come on, Bobert. Hey, Lauren Bobert, you got to lift your game up, right? 1791 is what you were talking about, the First Amendment, not 1776. Two different things. One's the independence, the other's Bill of Rights. And we barely got our Bill of Rights, so you should think about that. But, here's a Colorado freedom, Bober, just to show you what I'm talking about, right? The First Amendment is freedom of, you know, of religion, but from state religion. So, no state religion. You can't, you know, have an establishment of religion. You cannot establish Christianity. You cannot establish Buddhism. You cannot establish Islam. You cannot establish any religion as the state-sponsored religion. That's something else the First Amendment did. Um, the First Amendment did. So, Article 2, Section 4, Clause 1 of Colorado's Constitution extends our right of freedom from state religion, freedom from um, the religious, you know, uh, nut jobs like Bobert. No person, this is the Constitution, no person shall be denied any civil or political right, privilege, or capacity on account of his opinions concerning religion. No person shall be denied any civil or political right, privilege, or capacity on account of his opinions concerning religion. Freedom from religion, too, there, Bobert. We got freedom from the British redcoat religious nut jobs, right? That's also what we did in 1776. The oppressors. We got liberation from the big red coat government oppressors. We fought against the government, against the police, the red coat police of the 1700s. And religion. Religion, okay, yeah, we got freedom of speech, assembly, petition, press. Religion is like the weakest of the freedoms, right? Press, you get it, you know, go around asking questions, assembly, petition, speech. These are all pretty cool freedoms, but religion? What the fuck is religion? Hey, what you doing on Sunday? All just tradition and custom, huh? Just go along. It would be a dumb conversation. So let's just, you know, hey, hey, bro, you know you just got freedom, right, for your country. What you going to do on Sunday? What you going to do on Sunday to celebrate your freedom, right? You're a free American. You can do whatever the hell you want to do, bro. What you going to do? Oh, man, you know what I was going to do this Sunday? I'm going to go do some religion. Yeah, I'm going to get my religion it up. I'm going to do some religioning. Just, you know, worshiping random shit, chanting random shit, just kind of, just, yeah, just, you know, just religion. You know what I'm talking about. Like voodoo, right? Just fucking crazy, just. <sighs> so the elites love socialism because they think they won't have to partake in it. And they're not wrong. Socialism hardly ever affects those at the top. It's the regular people like you and me that will be destroyed. <laughs> Um, socialism has helped so many people. Social Security. Yeah, get rid of Social Security. Those old fucks, they don't vote the right way. So, get rid of Social Security. That's some socialism right there, but I bet you, I don't know. We'll see what Bobert has to say about that. I'm actually for social spending, but I don't like the idea that some people get a universal basic income check at the end of their lives and nobody else. You know, so people, you know, at the end of their lives, can, oh, I worked for this. No, the FDR fucking put it in your hands. FDR created a system that has worked for, you know, nearly 100 years. That's why Social Security has, you know, stayed around, and they finance everything with Social Security. So, and then socialist, um, Lauren Bobert, you got to, you've got to define your terms there. 
They're Floridian. Uh, the socialists are people who think that the workers can run the factories. They're the slaves that can run the plantation. It, Bobert wants us to think that the 1% are the socialists. The elites are the socialists. I mean, Bernie is a socialist, but Pelosi is a, uh, you know, unapologetic uh, capitalist. She's capitalist through and through. The neoliberals are capitalist as fuck. And the 1% in America are goddamn billionaires, right? The Confederates, they were the slave owners. But the billionaires, the 1% in America, they're capitalist as fuck. The elite in America are capitalists. She's trying to say the elite, the elite wants us to have socialism. What the fuck are you talking about? They want us to have health care there, Bobert. I mean, I can't believe, she is terrible. I, why are people against health care? I think it's fucking crazy. If we could afford the damn thing. They've never had a problem. They've never gone to a hospital and they never had to, you know, look at the bills and say we can't afford all this shit or we're going to, you know, the whole thing is going to sink. Because if they, they had some fucking shit like that, people lose all their shit with health care. Every nation in the world has it. Even if you do a private public system, that's still... But she's against all of it because she's a fucking fanatic. Republicans are Democrats and Democrats are, you know, uh, Democrats are Republicans and Republicans are batshit fucking crazy. She's a heartless, batshit crazy person. Right? I mean, Bernie Sanders is the only socialist in America. You're telling me the 1% is a bunch of socialism? Yeah, right. Everybody, so everybody in the world is certain. Get the fuck out of here. Even the Democrats screw over Bernie. So the, Joe Biden was the one that beat the socialist, right? Bernie's been a good man his whole life, and that's not good enough for you. Conservatives cl claim the brains. Liberals claim the heart. Bobert's a heartless fucking psycho. She's the Hannibal Lecter. She's the Hannibal Lecter. She's a fascist AOC. She's a Miss Poison Pork Slider. Bobert. Hey, Lauren Bobert. Florida called. Florida called and they want their ocean rat back. America voting systems should be made in America, serviced in America, and have all related servers housed in America. This is basic stuff. Uh, I guess it'll help with the integrity of the thing, but it seems a little nationalistic. Personally, I guess... I don't give a fuck if it's diebold, and I don't give a fuck if it's made in the U.S., made in China. I'd rather have paper ballots, frankly. But what I ultimately care about is the integrity of this election. Who's known for sound elections? Jimmy Carter said Venezuela. So if Venezuela made our voting machines, our paper ballot voting machines, I would, you know, or the Hondurans or Haitians, that's fantastic. It's fantastic for obvious reasons. Now, she's right about the Electoral College. She's also right about... Hearing the rumors of Joe Biden's cabinet nominees are chilling. He'll roll the red carpet out for the deep state that we worked to oust for the past four years. The stakes are so high right now. We do need principled opposition, but left wing is better than right wing right now. You know, is she going to get anything passed? Are we going to get any pork? Is anything going to change in the third congressional district in the next two years? 2020, Bo Burt says she's going to change a lot of shit in the next two years. So let's see what she can change. The holiday season is about giving thanks and embracing family and praising God. No government can ever take that away from you, America. Don't, you know, you know how Obama said praise God, love God, and everybody, they all say love God. What is she talking about? <laughs> if anything, they're turning Merry Christmas into a cuss word, you fucking pricks. Yeah, uh, no government can ever take away your right to praise God. I praise Allah. You know who else was inspired by God? The 9-11 Saudi Arabian terrorist. So there's something that Lauren Boebert has in common with Bin motherfucking Laden. She's forcing Zeus down our throats. Zeus is what, the big fucking Zeus man in the cloud, big Scott Daddy Zeus. We got to believe in that shit. She's the America Taliban. Miss Poison Pork Sliders, the America Taliban. So Jesus Christmas. Jesus Christmas, Jerusalem's crickets, Jerusalem's crickets. No government can ever take that away from you, but they can force it down your throats, make you listen to their prayers, make you listen to God this and God that. God bless every fucking thing. Fuck off. God bless. There ain't no God, motherfuckers. So you're saying nothing, bless nothing. No, we need something to bless something. With Scott Tipton, I had very little, uh, very little representation. Now I have even less with Bobert. Bobert said that she was inspired to get into this race because Scott Tipton 
dared to have a meeting with AOC. Scott Kitson dared to have a meeting with AOC. So I suppose that uh, Lauren Boebert will not meet with AOC or else, you know, Lauren Boebert's going to have another Boebert that's going to rise up from the ashes and take her place. So that's, uh, that's some batshit extreme heartless psychotic shit right there. That's the shit that represents me. I didn't have any right now with her. I got nothing. What the hell? America, this is the system. I mean, and then, is anybody being represented in? Oh, God. You know, Donald might be, it looks like he's gone, right? It looks like he's, this is it for his presidency. But his, the uh, Trump effects, Trumpism is going to have lingering effects. The Supreme Court, the judges, Lauren Boebert, for quite some time. God damn it. We need to have an untrumpening. Jesus Christ, can we undo? We usually just keep moving forward. Right? We don't undo the shit. We just, ah, that was another disaster. It's four years, but fuck it. But that's been the uh, 50th disastrous four years in a row. All right. That's some Bobert tweets. Not my representative. Peace.